Joining us here at our console in the Atlas Space Flight Operations Center is Richard Brace. Richard is the MSL Chief Mission Assurance Manager for the Mars Science Laboratory spacecraft. And uh, Richard has uh, been here for some time following the preparations to get MSL and the Curiosity rover ready for our launch today. And uh, Richard, uh, welcome. Very, we're very glad to have you here. And um, I know that, uh, that that so much has been going on in the uh, uh, payload hazards of surfacing facility where the rover has been. And uh, we'd like, if you would, just to look at, at the uh, some of the tape that we have, some of the preparations. Tell us it, what it is that we're seeing and what you've uh, been doing to get uh, MSL ready for launch today. All right, let's roll the tape. What you see here is uh, C-17. Uh, in fact, there were two delivery flights, uh, one in the middle of the May with the uh, crew stage heat shield and uh, back shell. And the second uh, flight was at the end of June with the rover and the descent stage. What you're seeing here is the offloading of the C, uh, from the C-17 and uh, uh, transportation over to PHSF. Here they're uh, offloading uh, from the vehicle and moving into the airlock. Uh, what you're looking at here is the crew stage. Uh, they're doing receiving preps. Um, we're doing a, a spin balance test. Uh, the uh, MSL uh, vehicle is a, a spin stabilized vehicle, so understanding the center of gravity is very important. Um, they're taking off the protecting covering of the descent module uh, here and doing a post-receiving inspection to make sure that was, nothing was damaged uh, during the transportation uh, from JPL to uh, Kennedy Space Center. Uh, this is uh, another look at the uh, descent stage. You'll notice that there are red protective covers over the uh, main engines for descent. And now we're uncovering uh, the rover as it was shipped uh, in its stowed position with uh, the mobility system wheels uh, locked up underneath the rover. Again, a post-receiving inspection is being done here to make sure no damage during transportation. Uh, this is uh, an integration, uh, pre-integration that was done with the power system, the multi-mission radioisotope thermal electric generator uh, to verify the mechanical and electrical interface uh, and the rover was powered uh, with it in, in place and verified its functionality prior to its final installation uh, at the vertical in interface uh, facility. Uh, here we're looking at uh, the rover. Here the mobility system has been deployed. Uh, the plan is to do some driving. Uh, the ro remote sensing uh, mast is being deployed here. Uh, we have the camera and uh, the cam cam, one of the instruments. Uh, that's mounted uh, within this unit here. Um, the business end of the rover here is this is the robotic arm. Uh, you're looking at the drill and the drill bit assembly here. There are also a couple instruments here, the alpha particle spectrometer and uh, a microscope. Uh, the integration of the vehicle is kind of like a Russian doll. Uh, you're seeing the descent stage being lowered onto the rover and they get integrated first. Uh, then the descent, power descent module is attached to uh, the back shell. And then the back shell is mounted to the cruise stage. And the last part of the integration before we have a completed vehicle would be the installation of uh, the heat shield, which I think you'll uh, be seeing shortly. Here they're doing final closeouts uh, of uh, the back shell before installing uh, the heat shield. Make sure all of the items that are removed before flight have been removed and uh, everything is uh, appropriately buttoned up. You see the heat shield here being moved in place. Um, and uh, 
move for uh, installation onto the back shell. Uh, here's a picture of the completed uh, vehicle as it's uh, ready for launch. Um, it launches with the heat shield uh, up and uh, it's moving into place to be installed within the uh, Atlas uh, fairing. Um, all this activity occurred in the uh, PHSF. Uh, a lot of equipment and uh, took up a fair amount of room when we were doing the processing um, in, from June until the time that we accomplished the installation into the fairing. Uh, you see the uh, project logo and uh, we are starting transportation from PHS out, F out to the vertical integration facility uh, to be mated with the launch vehicle. Well, Richard, can you tell us a little bit uh, what the test team is doing in the control room uh, here at Kennedy uh, while we're getting ready for launch? What are they doing for the spacecraft uh, in the countdown? Um, they have to get the uh, vehicle in the final uh, configuration. So they walk through a series of uh, configuration tests and uh, incrementally uh, get the vehicle prepared for, uh, for launch. And one of the last things that we do is we transition from uh, external power, su power supplied by the support equipment into internal power, which makes us uh, ready for, uh, for launch. Would you uh, be able to estimate uh, over the course of the processing about how many team members from JPL have been at the Cape? Um, the, the core maxed at about 70 people. Uh, we did a, a, an extensive uh, two-week system test, in which case another 20 to 30 uh, engineers came down to support uh, that process. Well, Richard, thank you very much, and uh, best of luck today. And uh, I know you're, you're looking forward to uh, the first time you'll be hearing from the spacecraft after it's uh, off the rocket, which uh, I guess is five minutes or so after, after launch. So uh, thank you very much, and best of luck. Thank you, George. Bye -bye.